Welcome to Author Mastery Insights. I am with Dr. Donald Francis, and this is an amazing opportunity to, to speak to somebody who's had such a powerful impact and influence on chiropractic throughout the world. And he's the author or facilitator of this incredible book here. I love it. And I've been reading through this, The Wisdom of 33. And before we get into the book and the discussion of the role that Francis has had in the creation of this book, a little bit of background. Dr. Francis, um, he loves being a chiropractor. He thinks it's one of the greatest jobs in the world. And where else can you uh, help people achieve so much with their health and with their life? And uh, that passion flows over into every part of his life. He graduated at Valor Victorian and Summa Cum Laude from the Palmer College of Chiropractic. He's passionate about the study and practice of chiropractic and continually is furthering his academic and practical knowledge of this broad, intriguing, unique and beautiful form of healthcare that is chiropractic. He's taken special interest in family practice from babies to their grandparents and includes a pair of pregnant mothers and children um, treating infants from birth onwards. Don is also the secretary of the Scottish Chiropractic Association. He's also an instructor of Safer Occipital Technique in Europe, as well as representing um, in so many organisations to, to further the chiropractic profession. Um, Dr. Don Francis, welcome to Auth Mastering Insights. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Marcus. It's lovely to be here, actually. Really nice. I really appreciate what you are doing. And before we begin, you know, talk, talking deeply about the principle of writing, I love, you know, this, I love, first of all, the cover is beautiful. I love a gift from Chiropractic Scotland really to the world. I'd love you to talk just a little bit about, you know, the wisdom of 33, you know, what is the book about? Why did you write this book? And, and, and what, what value is this book going to provide for the uh, Scottish Chiropractic um, College? Thanks. Thanks, Marcus. Well, um, a little bit of, I suppose I'll just tell the story about how it came around. Um, two years ago this week, we were at the Edinburgh Lectures, um, which is a, 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 a really good vitalistic um, summit in, in Edinburgh, Scotland, run by my friend, um, Ross MacDonald, who's the, the founder of the Scottish Chiropractic Association. And I was just sitting there and, you know, there, there were half hour speakers and, and a keynote of an hour. And, and every five minutes, there was a pearl of wisdom that I wrote down. You know, I don't write notes copiously, but I do write down things that I think are going to refer back to me. And part of the weekend, there was always mentioning raising money for the college and, and the college vision and mission. And I just thought, you know, what if we could um, distill um, a seminar or, or more than a seminar into a book? Something, you know, these were short half hour, 20 minute, half hour segments. Uh, people coming up, giving a very powerful uh, talk, something really important to them. And, um, and if we could put that in a book, we could have maybe three or four seminars in one book, which you could buy for the price of an adjustment and all of the money would go to the college. And I thought at the beginning that, you know, what I'd do is I'd ask a few people and they would send me a, a word, a, you know, Microsoft Word copy and I would literally just stick them all, you know, front to back in a book and, and put a cover around it and that would be it. But uh, two years later, we've got this beautiful, <laughs> this beautiful book and hundreds of hours of editing and, um, and, and make it, you know, it's been a, you know, and, and just getting... So it's called the wisdom of 33 um, because 33, obviously we have our 33 principles and it's a number that's very easily, uh, it's very easy to, to see in chiropractic. Um, David Serio, who's been really helpful um, with creating this book, also wrote a book called 33 and that was the inspiration I have to say um, between writing it and the, the segment idea. I wanted something that you could read just before bed or dare I say, you know, one trip to the toilet or something like that, so, something you could you could read, learn. Um, you didn't have to sit down at the beginning and read the whole thing. And so we set about thinking that I was going to have 33 chapters. And I got, I wrote down a list of names and I got to about 50 quite quickly. And I thought, you know, we're not going to fit all of these people into 33 chapters. Why don't we double it to 66? But we'll just keep two people per chapter. And that would not only increase the number of input, you know, the number of wee stories that are in the book, but also allow us to go broader around the world. So we've got people from Chile, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, America, UK, Spain, um, South Africa. Um, so, you know, there, there is a really, 
a broad mix. Everybody in it at least agrees with the word innate intelligence and would say would be able to say the word subluxation without trying to you know drop the C-bomb in a room full of nuns. That's amazing. And uh, look, it's really interesting that you raise the, the uniformity of innate intelligence there because I know that when we look at the 33 principles, the word subluxation appears in those 33 principles, but innate intelligence appears infinitely more often. And so it's fascinating that you you raise that within the chiropractic profession that is certainly unified by that principle of innate. And the, the wisdom, and again, innate intelligence is a wisdom of the body. So the wisdom of the innate intelligence inherent within every chiropractor is manifest. And having read you know, many of the chapters of this book, and I only recently got it, everyone again, go grab your copy. It is beautiful, it is brilliant. Um, the wisdom in there really gives us the opportunity as we read the pages to, to awaken both our own innate intelligence or to stimulate even greater if we are already exhibiting that. Um, so what do you think is so unique about not just the authors and their contribution, but the message within that that is that is so energizing and inspiring and, and it evokes such a strong sense of you know, purpose of chiropractic? How, how did you design that into the, the material of the book? I'd like to say I was a really intelligent um, person who could have great foresight as to how everything was going to turn out. Um, I, I don't really, but I did. What I asked every author was for, in less than 2,000 words, something that they hold truly dear to them. If they could um, leave the world tomorrow and impart a message to the world of chiropractic that they feel would be really, really important. What would that message be with the inspiration of um, growing people's confidence and practice growing people's certainty um, helping people within practice helping people advance their their knowledge and so on so that was that was what i asked people um, to do and it was a very broad canvas so you can see uh, in there that we've got two or three chapters of science and um, some of it pretty highbrow stuff uh, we've got a couple of chapters of of, of pediatric, uh, of people who are very enthusiastic about pediatric uh, chiropractic. Um, we've got a lot of what I would describe as the sort of chiropractic visionaries, you know, people like uh, Gilles Lamarche from Life College, um, Martin Harvey is a communicator. Um, we've got, you know, some quite famous people like James Chestnut and Bill Esteb. You know, Bill's not a chiropractor, but I've learned a hell of a lot about chiropractic from Bill Esteb. You know, before, uh, before I met him, my my boundaries within practice weren't quite as firm as they should be. So throughout the mix, uh, let me just say this book, first of all, is, is not just my effort, it's a collaboration. So there's a group of five of us. We call ourselves the cause. I don't know if you remember in the in the 90s, there was a lovely Irish band called the cause, and they there were three beautiful women, and there was always this strange bloke at the back. Well, we're we're four really <laughs> Very capable woman and the strange bloke at the back and um, so we call ourselves the cause and as a group you know we we I, I i very quickly realized that it was too big just for me and that i got involved firstly a lady called Haley dorian who is on the board of the, of the scottish chiropractic association uh, and she is incredibly capable and, and she helped recruit a couple of other people naomi mills and um, mary phillips and claire cullen and um, but between the five of us, we we used our collective thought process to 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 get the list together, and um, and to get out there. I mean, two thirds of the list are people who who've really affected my life. Um, you know, that my one of my instructors from Palmer College and um, friends from um, Palmer and and from around the world. Um, but but about a third of them are people I haven't met. Um, who came together out of that group process, and um, I think it's added a lot more flavour um, to the to the to the book and the variety. And when it does, it shares incredible wisdom, and and, and both it evokes a strong you know, sense of you know, understanding of what chiropractic is, the impact and value and power of chiropractic, and therefore within that, the inspiration for us to go out and do more. So, uh, I love that part of it. The another question in relation. To before we move into some, maybe some of the processes about the creation of this book is just talk a little bit more about the Scottish Chiropractic College, you know, your role there, the role of the, you know, what is happening within the college itself, 
um, in the world at the moment and, and why fundraising is so important for the SEC. Sure. So um, I'm actually not on the board of the, um, the, the Scottish Chiropractic, Scottish College of Chiropractic Trust, <laughs> Charitable Trust, I beg your pardon. Um, but I, Ross McDonald, the guy who is the founder, is a very good friend of mine. He is the president of the Scottish Chiropractic Association and I'm the vice president. So we, we're, we're, we're good friends, we talk often. And he was my coach for five years whilst the college was being, um, you know, whilst the genesis thought process of the college was coming. So I, whilst I'm not directly involved, I'm very emotionally involved. I also live in Scotland. And, you know, I've got patients who um, drive, a five, you know, it's a five hour round trip for their adjustment because there's no chiropractors between that space. We need chiropractors. We, we're desperately short of chiropractors. So Ross has had this idea probably, probably longer than 10 years, I, I would say, but it's probably the last five years that, that the college has really crystallized. Um, the team has been brought together. Sadly, last year during the lockdown, we lost our um, we lost the guy who was going to be our first president. Um, he's a, also an Australian, and um, so the books the books dedicated to him. And um, Dave Russell, I did, I, did you know Dave at all, Max? I didn't know him. I was, you know, I, I, he's well known to the profession. His role in the Australian Spinal Research Foundation. He's involved with the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. So. He is a hero of chiropractic, and while I did not personally know him, I knew of him and his impact on chiropractic and his service to chiropractic. He's an incredible lead, and we are both grateful that he's you know, honoured by this book and, and grateful that uh, it is remembered in these pages. Yeah, no, Dave was a truly, I mean, I only probably met Dave five or six times. Um, he was going to be the first president, and and, and sadly, um, he, he won't be, but he... He's left an indelible mark in chiropractic, and um, I think that 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 is that is without. Um, but so in the UK, we are a regulated profession. Um, I think Australia. I think in Australia you are too. Um, so we have the General Chiropractic Council, and in order to get a, a college up and running, we can we can go for accreditation through two sources. Um, in the UK, the first source of accreditation that we really need is through the General Chiropractic Council. And if we can get that, and Ross's, Ross and his team are, are two stages out of four through that process, then um, anybody who graduates from the college will be able to practice within the United Kingdom. Um, to get that worldwide accreditation, we need um, from the ECCE, which is the European Chiropractic Certification something or other. Anyway, um, there's there's a bit of history recently with the ECC and accreditation bodies giving two of the colleges in Europe, that's the McTimony College and the Barcelona College, a bit of a rough time on their way through accreditation because of their vitalistic credentials, you know, regardless of the fact that they still teach physical diagnosis and all things required through CCE. Um, it was the it was the the fact that both colleges we're still linked to chiropractic or traditional chiropractic thought that, that gave them a bit of a rough time. And, and Ross is certainly, because of that, not having the smoothest run through, you know, there's a, there's a couple of very physiotherapy orientated courses that have got going really quickly in the UK with very little scrutiny um, because they're, they're, they're going straight into the physiotherapy department of, of already established major universities. Um, so, so the college is two stages ahead. I think COVID has slowed down a lot of things. I think that may delay opening by a year. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but we're still, I believe, on track for a, um, September 2022. Um, I've certainly got two of my CAs who really want to become chiropractors. So um, Edinburgh is only an hour and a bit away. Um, so I'm hoping that they, um, and if, I mean, if it slips by one year, it would be worth it for uh, for the quality of the college that we're going to get, you know. And, and we really need chiropractors. You know, these patients are driving miles. Um, it, it would be, you know, I've alluded to the fact that in chiropractic we're not entirely a united profession, and I think we have to think about us, think to ourselves as chiropractors, what is unique about chiropractic? Because if the answer is nothing, then we're stuffed within one or two generations. You know, if 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 the only thing that differentiates us is our name, then we're not then like osteopaths in, in America, 
you know, um, osteopaths are prescribing surgical doctors. The only difference is you need a slightly lower grade point average to get into an osteopathic school and you get into medical school. And I don't think that's a, a great way to go. So we need to really have a think, you know, in Fred, in Fred Barge's terms, you know, you know, what is unique about this college? Are we happy to, to sort of, you know, trot off down the crimson road to oblivion only to be remembered as an advanced form of bone setting? Um, you know, and what is unique, and that is subluxation, innate intelligence, and this deep understanding of, of the body's ability to heal. Um, so mm -hmm. with those unique parts at the core of the development of the Scottish Chiropractic College, um, we've got a little bit of a bumpy ride. So, so Ross's first mission is to get GCC accreditation. And once that's done, he'll go for the ECCE, which is the international version. And you can't get that anyway until you've graduated at least one class. So, um, you know, we're, we're a few years away from that. But I, I think, uh, you know, Ross has raised uh, quite a lot of money, a couple of million, I think. Um, they've, they've hired people now to, to get the course set up. Um, they're, they're looking, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at facilities. So, so real tangible things are moving in the direction of, of that. But, um, and, and it's going to be associated with a, with a, to get the degree status, it's going to be associated with a, with a mainstream university as well. Um, and that's all in place, you know, so all the, 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 the course development and everything is all going to be in place. Sadly, with Dave's um, passing, one of, the one of the main instruments in that course development, Dave himself, has is not there so you know the work is underway to recruit a replacement and um and to get the course um you know firmed up amazing and i think not only do we need more chiropractors in scotland but in fact throughout the world we need more vitalistic chiropractors and we need more vitalistic teaching education institutions to maintain that uniqueness of chiropractic and so for the sec to take on that role um, and to be in that position um, within you know the United Kingdom and Europe, I think it's so important, and and that's why this book um, one it not only is an amazing gift to chiropractors or to chiropractors, it's a fundraiser for the for the college as well. So every person who purchases the book is actually creating an opportunity for the college to serve at a broader level, and I think that's a beautiful the, the gift gives to the chiropractor, but the chiropractor's purchase of the book gives to the profession, and I think that's an amazing and wonderful gift. Um, so I think that the, the question I'd like to go to in the book is I'd, I'd love to just dive a little bit deeper about, you know, you spoke about the idea of, you know, it might be simply you know, a method of, you know, sending out some requests for some emails and people then sending back their process. And obviously it didn't, it, it doesn't necessarily unfold that way. So for chiropractors wanting to write a book and, and seeing the value in a book, and we'll talk more if I can about that. Talk a little bit more about that process. Was it a matter of just contacting these people? Did you know if they want to write an anthology style book, this would be called an anthology book. And if they wanted to do it, not only just for chiropractic, or maybe it was even within their health and an anthology of how chiropractic effect affects patients' lives. So if they wanted to design a process, I'd love for them to, to learn from you to reflect on how you reached out to these you know, legends of the chiropractic profession, uh, these great wisdom keepers of chiropractic how you reached out, how they responded, how you were able to galvanise that message and, and unify, unify that, bringing it together into a book? Well, first of all, chiropractors are some of the most generous people in the world. So, the, you know, I just put it out there and I only had two or three people say no. And I even managed to, through fair means and foul, get one of those people back into the book. Um, because I thought she was so important to be in there. Um, but chiropractors are very, very generous. So uh, I use social media. I mean, I knew I knew about half of these people personally, or at least I had a personal contact with them. Um, social media um, was the way I reached most of them. And Ross McDonald, having run the Edinburgh Lectures for the last 16 years, knows in, you know i think his his personal index in his in his phone is full of just about everybody who's a, in the who's who of chiropractic so ross was helpful and and melissa sanford who is the chief executive of the uca um here in the uk also has an in, has a personal index of the who's who of chiropractic so really um we, we we really started in in our first lockdown april 2020 to despite the, the idea of being brewing for, 
for the first sort of nine months. I, I'd contacted a few people. Um, Dave Russell, who this book is now dedicated to, was was going to write the forward. He'd been um, elected as the first president of the Scottish Chiropractic Association, so he was going to write the forward. Sadly, his dad writes the forward now um, as a as a form of eulogy. Um, so I, I put out, I, I wrote a letter very quickly um, and got a set of emails, sent the letter out to about 65, 66 people um, and saying, you know, this is what I'm after. Less than 2000 words, please, of, of your wisdom. And some of the real, some really great people were back within a week. You know, David Serio had his copy back to me within 10 days and just, wow. You know, not only here's yes, and here's my copy, dude. Um, and, and a few other people, Larry Markson was back within, I think, probably 48 hours from when we spoke. Uh, and I've never met Larry Markson before in my life. Um, but he certainly his thought process in, in terms of the bead you have understanding uh, is really, has been really important for me personally. Um, some people, I mean, James Chestnut, who's probably one of, the, one of the more famous people that we have contributing in here, you know, guards his uh, intellectual property really tightly. So to have him give us a fantastic chapter, completely referenced, um, you know, that took that took a little bit more time. But he, you know, he's such a meticulous person. Um, so, mm -hmm. but but chiropractors, are, you know, we're so generous. Anyway, self publishing is really easy at the moment. Possibly the easiest way is to just get Amazon to do it, um, but we didn't want to. We didn't want to do that. Firstly, um, the quality is not quite as good as a book we wanted. We wanted something that was going to still be on people's shelves in, in thirty years' time, when when people like you and I are, 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 are just footnotes and sort of. Well, I hope not in thirty years' time, but maybe in forty or fifty. But. Um, we wanted something that would, would be would be good. We also wanted something that wasn't just going to be held to Amazon. So we used a, a publishing company called Lightning Source, which is or Ingram Spark. Um, it was fractionally more expensive. I could have got a publishing house in the UK to print each book for about equivalent of six Australian dollars, three pounds, maybe three pounds fifty, seven dollars. Um, but then we had the, pro the, the the problem with fulfillment, and unfortunately, without you know, Amazon is the world's largest fulfillment company, you know, and they take a, a big hike of money for that, but, but they get it everywhere. But through Ingram Spark, um, we we're able actually in Australia, I don't know all these companies, but um, Dimex, it's, it's for sale in Dimex. It's, um, if you just put the wisdom of 33, Donald Francis into Google, in Australia, you'll get about five distributors. So if you, if you don't want to use Amazon, um, you can get it through those people, and I think it's free. It's free delivery. It takes it's print on demand, so it takes about five days. You won't order it today and get it tomorrow. Um, it's print. It's print on demand, so that, that takes about five days. But it's much easier that way. To I mean, I've put a little bit of my own money to get it going to order the first set of copies and get the editing done. Um, but it it's it's not a, 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 a it's not a massive amount, uh, probably about four or five thousand Australian dollars um, equivalent, two thousand pounds, two and a half thousand pounds. But you don't have to do that. I mean, that's because I've used professional editors. Um, really, getting a book out is 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 really, really simple these days. One of the ladies who helped us, Naomi Mills, in that same time as getting this out, got her own book out as well. Um, published and, and she's distributing that herself through her sort of uh, friendship group um, and chain uh, through social media. Yeah, you're right. It is now far more easy than any point uh, in history. And I think that's what makes writing a book so important and so powerful. And, and really, if I ask this last question really is, you know, what impact has, you know, obviously I've just shared with you my love of this book and my enjoyment of reading and, and the nuggets I'm getting from it. But what have you heard from other people? What type of feedback are you getting that I guess gratifies you and in not only obviously as a fundraiser, but more than what it has meant to the impact it's had on, on chiropractors and the message of what what it is, you know, it's that what has stirred in the hearts and minds of chiropractors in the world. So I'd love for you to just just to reflect now upon what having you know facilitated this, 
has meant for you individually and personally. Um, I'd love to reflect on that. It's been, um, I've been, had, I've had a lot of feedback through social media, actually. The first thing is, is that I, I think sometimes we in the vitalistic community feel certainly up here in the Northern hemisphere, we can sometimes feel, we can be made to feel like we're some sort of idiot um, minority, but we're not. We're, I think that we're close to a tipping point where regardless of what the colleges are putting out, the, the, the vast majority of the colleges are putting out, I think we're in a tipping point in terms of the actual practice in chiropractic profession. Um, where we might be in the ascendancy. And a lot of people have just been delighted to realize that we, we are um, much bigger than they thought. So that's the first thing. You know, the vitalistic community is vibrant and it's worldwide. And we are a bigger, closer knit team than, than many people thought. And wow, look at this, we're all together. So that's the first thing that I've got. The second thing is everybody, not many people could quite realize who we've managed to get into these pages and the quality of the, the stories from you know, some of the world's greats. And I don't wanna list names necessarily because I'll forget, you know, with 66 people, I'll, I'll forget, but we've got, um, you know, James, well, I will list names, James Chestnut, Steve Williams is a pediatric guru here in the Northern Hemisphere. We, we've got uh, Marty Rosen from America. He's a pediatric guru over there. We've got Peter Kavorkian, Martin Harvey, Tony Croak, uh, Brian Kelly, former president of New Zealand College, president of Life West. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Patrick Sim, your president of the ACC. Uh, we've, uh, we've got uh, Adrian Wimbaum, president of the Barcelona College. Uh, Gilles Lamanche from Life West. We've got Sean Powers, who's an absolute powerhouse of, um, of energy and enthusiasm in America. From your side, we've got Alison Asher as well. Um, We've got Billy DeMoss. I mean, he's somebody who is a bit Marmite. Uh, well, you guys call Vegemite. You know, you either love him or you don't. And um, I actually, I actually love him. Not necessarily all his politics and stuff, but uh, but I think he's a great, gentle soul. He doesn't sound that way on Facebook necessarily. Um, James Chestnut, as I've said, we've got um, Brandy McDonald. Um, the the list goes on and on and on. And um, Listen, I'm sorry if I didn't mention anybody there. The list is, is enormous, but um, inside all of those people, we've probably got, a, you know, close on 800 years of chiropractic uh, experience distilled into, into a single book. And I, I think genuinely the way it's written with most people submitting about 1800 words is we've got about three weekend seminars in there of, of half hour presentations. Um, yeah, really, it's really, it's really epic. And it's, for that reason alone, I think it, it, it's a gift. I love the, the little subtitle there, a gift for chiropractic from Scotland. It is without doubt, not only a gift to chiropractic, but it's a gift to humanity because when chiropractors read this and they re are reminded of the, the wisdom of chiropractic, the, the, the truth that chiropractic speaks into our hearts and, and, and from our minds, we, we get to change the world through the inspiration this provides. I think it's an incredible book. I, you know, and for me, it's really exciting not only to share this message with people to, to look into how to create a new ecology book, but more than that, it's to remind people that you know, when we buy this book, we grow, we learn, we expand our potential and our influence and our impact, but most important, we serve the profession. So I'm going to encourage everyone to go. I'm going to put the link below here um, on this video. Go grab your copy, purchase this copy, share on social media if you're grabbing it, remind people of its, if it's an investment. The funds go to the FCC and that means serving chiropractic and you know serving communities that need more chiropractors. So um, I love it. I want people to get out there and share this. So Dr. Donald Francis, I appreciate your contribution to this and the team behind you as well. Thank you to them. Everyone, you know what we've got to do. We've got to go change the world together. And we do this through loving chiropractic and serving chiropractic. Donald, any closing words before we wrap up here? Just one, I'm just going to use Dave, uh, Dave Russell's quote his favorite quote, he usually put a swear word in there, but, but I won't. Um, he, he would say chiropractic is so effing beautiful in its simplicity. And that's true. Uh, you know, we don't need to complicate it. It's just simple and beautiful. And let's, let's keep it that way. Absolutely. And the simple thing to do is go by this book, share the message, and we change the world. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Take it easy, mate.